what is in this box of rounds? Ooh. Well, that it was getting kind of light, so I put more rounds in there. So if 10,000 ounces of silver comes in and the spot price is $100 an ounce, are you going to be able to satisfy the cash requirements? I probably would have closed the doors before that. Um, they can shut the door anytime. The worst day on Wall Street since the crash of 1987. We're now down 43%. This could be the most serious recession in decades. Protect your retirement with a gold and silver IRA. Learn more at sdbullion.com slash IRA. Hi, Tim. Yes. How are you? <clears throat> We're doing just fine. Today. Are you doing well? Yeah. How's business? Business is very strange. Strange? Yeah. We, we still have the same number of buyers. We have um, a lot more sellers. And all the sellers I've talked to pretty much have good reasons for selling their gold and silver. Mm. Um, like, like this stuff right here, right? Is this something you know, this that... Is, this is pretty typical. I mean, people have um, a need for a little cash. Um, I've had people even who are putting their cash away or putting it someplace where it's safe and, mm -hmm. you know, like gold and silver. Mm -hmm, I mm -hmm. think a lot of people are... Um, choosing not to put the money in the bank and then, you know, mm -hmm. withdrawing it from the bank. Right now, what, silver is, what, $23 roughly? Net range, 23 plus. Right. <clears throat> yeah. What happens when silver, and I say when, silver hits $50 or $100? What are people going to do? Aren't they going to come flooding into Tim's shop and sell their silver? like crazy yes. so people are selling now but the question is what will happen when that happens well it's happened twice it happened in 1980 it happened again in 2011 mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and <clears throat> 2011 was very interesting because people are showing up uh one day with tubs of silver coins it didn't matter if they were american eagles or bars or whatever they were everything was roughly the same price and um all the way up, you know, as soon as it passed 40, people were unloading it in huge chunks because they didn't trust it being where it was. And I remember buying something like a 100-ounce bar for a customer, and um, it was around 40. And, um, you know, it kept going up. So when I placed the order, it cost me like $4,700. And I think that's still a paperweight at my on my desk at home. <laughs> it cost me $4,700 and it was a good lesson. Two questions related to that. One, aren't there a lot of buyers too as that price is taking off? Doesn't FOMO kick no, in? Don't people it, start no, actually, chasing the, the momentum? Nope. Well, to a limited extent. When it went up uh, over 40, uh, the buyers started slowing down. Okay. Because somebody who had bought it at 20 was probably selling it. After it got over about 43 or $44, I think it had one buyer. Wow. And he's reminded me of that since. <laughs> <laughs> no, wait a minute, though. What if it really sh shoots the moon? We get into 80, 90, 100, 120. Do you think that will drive not just the sellers, but also a whole new round of buyers, maybe those who have never purchased precious metals? Not metal? in the beginning. Okay. It will take a time, a long time, for people to get used to the higher price. And nobody can really trust the COMEX because they're able to control the price. Um, it seems like the, for years now, the price has been, for the price of silver, has been uh, specifically depressed. Mm -hmm. And they're going to have to get over that hump before mm -hmm. it ever goes above 30. Okay. It's really, it's that, people are that cautious because they've been through it at least twice. What would it mean to you? Would you be able to satisfy sellers coming into your store dumping thousands, like you said, tubs of silver? What would that do to you? Could you, could you actually buy it all? Well, what happened in 2011 is um, I had bought so much, and I called a wholesale, and I said, I'm going to have to uh, unload this. Um, can I come down on Monday? And his answer was, don't bother because I'm not buying anymore. Okay, and um, I said, "Why?" And he said, "Because the refinery now owes me four and a half million dollars." 
So that's, it, it affects the whole system, from top to bottom. And if you have a, you know, a contract with a refinery, uh, they can always close the door whenever they've had enough. Everybody has to adjust, and the refineries that you are the ultimate, uh, you know, um, buyer of this stuff. Yeah. Um, they can shut the door anytime. So if somebody comes in with, again, let's say silver hits a hundred dollars, yep. that triple digit yep. number, right? And they bring in tons of this stuff, and they say, Tim, I want this now. Do you think it'll be there? Um, yeah, I think it will be because it would, it'll make a lot of changes on the way up. It's not going to go from 2315 where it is today to, um, a hundred dollars. No. And, um, keep in mind that, um, the COMEX has a, uh, a vested interest in silver, physical mm. silver. Um, so number one, you're expecting the COMEX to let it go. Um, I don't know what their physical silver requirements are, but they, they're running a business as well. And they have to you know, make whatever adjustments are necessary. Anybody in the business is going to have to adjust. You would, have, you would have to adjust, right? I mean... I would. I'm not sure I'm going to be around when it gets to 100. I'll probably be <laughs> long gone. That's why I think I'd be very surprised if it goes, um, in the, by the end of the year, over 30. I'd be very surprised. So if 10,000 ounces of silver comes in and the spot price is $100 an ounce, are you going to be able to satisfy the cash requirements? I probably would have closed the doors before that. Seriously, it's not, not worth putting that kind of money into it. And wow. that's, that's true for everybody. You know, right now, there are a lot of coin dealers who don't want to mess in this market because you have to invest too much money at the prices we're at today. Mm -hmm. And... Um, you know, it's, it, that makes perfect sense to me because I know what it takes in, in uh, money to run a business like mm -hmm. this. Um, but, you know, there, there are gobs and gobs of gold around here. You know, I could fill four or five of these trays, but that's money that's tied up. That's not money that is turning over. Britannia. Huh? Are, you, are you here to sell that? I am. See, more gold being sold. And uh -oh. silver. Being sold. And silver. It, you're selling silver too. I am. So what do you have in here? Uh, you know, a little change. You know. Wow. Oh, I got you for you. Oh, those. Oh, those are kilos. Yeah. SD right now will give you a dollar over. Mm. On on buyback. Yeah, buyback. That's you got to well, ship it. Shipping, you got to ship it that's there, true, right? Too, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of times I'll just move it into gold. You know, I wait for that. Uh, you know the ratio. gold to silver ratio yeah wait yeah. for the ratio and then and move it into that you know that's right but i was a little concerned when i asked that question of tim yeah you know and he's like well i might not be able to be in business it depends that's a scary thing think it's about a, that. well think about other local coin shop dealers and you bring in your big truckload of silver and you're going to yeah. go and get gold and they're closed yeah that's well then you're you're stuck with a bunch of metal aren't you? you're stuck with a bunch of silver yeah if you're playing that ratio right. i mean i you know as long as we got a coin shop dealer like tim open we're going to be able to make that that conversion. Yeah, that's that why beautiful? you want to diversify in all kinds of things, not just gold and silver. Tell know? me, tell me that trade isn't look beautiful. Oh yeah, it's pretty nice. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty nice. Yeah. I clicked on the on Kitco for the prices, and it dropped five cents while I was <laughs> looking see. at it. Yeah. That's fine. We'll do it. You want the seventy six? Absolutely, or you can give me the seven thirteen. <laughs> I mean, you're, one, two, you're probably three, going to be okay with three, this seven. either way. Well, no, it's not a... Plus, you don't want to give all that cash to the bank. Remember, they give you a hard time about that? Don't, don't, don't you know, talk banks, stuff. Nobody wants to talk about banks. Hey, did you hear bank, another bank closed? A cl closer was in trouble. Oh, the yeah. stock was way down. Yeah, what, I, I what's the name of it? I, it was something like that. I don't know who it was. Yeah, the stock was way down. I can't remember the name of the bank. Oh we're, we're not out of the banking. No. Trouble. No, but they'll tell you that, uh, oh, well, J.P. Morgan was going to buy that bank anyway. God. <laughs> I mean, they, they get lots of excuses. J.P. Morgan's impressed all over the place. with Jamie Dimon because yeah. he's trying to uh, wake people up. I'm glad he's taking the stance he is because people really need to know the truth. We're not getting any truth out of anybody else, and you know what I'm talking about. I sure do. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Ooh, what's that? Oh, it's a badly damaged Britannia. 
Isn't it amazing how beautiful it is when you buy it and how damaged it is when you sell it? <laughs> you, keep it you keep it in the plastic. I don't know. <laughs> I'm kidding. He is too. It's funny. Oh, yeah. Boy, I even hesitate buying gold at this level because Wait, I'm what? trusted. At this level, I hesitate to buy gold because this is this is all funny. You look at the graphs on these things. I oh, have yeah. it's part of it is Jerome speak. <laughs> That's exactly what it is. Uh, let's see this graph here. Okay, now why did it go up here? What's a good reason? Uh, first of all, why did it go up there? Why did it go down? Then why did it go up here and then go down? And what is this all? This is not a pattern. You're um, supposed to tell us. It looks like a heart attack. <laughs> it it looks like something seriously wrong. Get the paddles, man! Get the paddles. But jump start you know, that guy. He says, "Well, we're looking for a little more evidence that uh, inflation is say abating, or he wants some other term." I don't know. And the metals shoot up. Whoop! Gold goes up like that. Come on. What was it yesterday? And why is it doing this today? And it's all it, weird. Where's it going to be tomorrow? In in the negative? Yeah. So we're supposed just... to be chasing gold and everything's whack. Tim, didn't I tell you not too long ago that the calculus has all changed, that they hang on every word the Federal Reserve says? Yeah, and they they're do. trying to but predict who, what they're going to do. <laughs> who is listening to the Federal Reserve? Traders. And, and why are they? Because they're addicted to cheap money, Tim. They want, they need an injection of stimulus which, in the form of rate cuts. And eventually, QE5. That's what they need, Tim. It, there's no rhyme or reason to this market. I get lectures from this guy. <laughs> and, and, you know, he's the one that told me, oh, they're cutting rates in March. And now it's at least May. Has okay, right? all right. <laughs> Have I ever been right? Yeah, okay, okay, all right. Yeah, no. I really think the cuts are coming. Rate cuts? Yep. <clears throat> this well, year, multiples. Yeah, I think the, they should be afraid, afraid enough of Trump getting in there to, to um, whatever they do, they better be a little more cautious. Mm. Uh, about, number one, running up the debt. Number two, about quantitative easing. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Bailouts. Mm -hmm. they better, if they even have bailouts in the back of their mind, it's a mistake. And... Um, uh, today, too big to fail should be, sucks to be you. Sorry, that's life. If you can't run your business so you don't fail, to stop cheating people. Maybe stick around longer. Mm. Oh, and it's, <clears throat> there's more of that coming. That's the problem. You know, we apparently didn't learn anything from 2008. So while you do that, Tim, what... What is in this box of rounds? Well, that, it was getting kind of light. You know, kind of, I, I could actually pick it up. So I put more rounds in there. Oh. 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 There are all different types of buffaloes oh. in there. So some new stuff and, in there? You know, this Mercury Dime round, which is a very popular one. Um, this is a little bit like the Talents, but I, I don't know what the, um, the background of it is. Semi-religious, mm -hmm. and then there are a lot of oddball things like you know, uh, um, you know, lunar near, New Year coins, ships, something you can get yourself engraved and you give to yourself as a present, since nobody else will. Is that Trump? You just covered up? Oh, was it? Oh, that one. Yes, that's it. <clears throat> that's not made gold or silver. But, okay. <laughs> but yeah, you know, lots of interesting. Lots things of interesting, there. cool stuff in here. Do you want me to put some of these in there in flips? Would that make sense? Oh, to do, that'd be a good you... idea. I, you know, I may have a tube for sunshine. Ooh, okay. Oh, that's like, this is sunshine. Let me see. I don't know about all of them. And I do, I do separate the buffaloes and I put those in a tube. Okay. So any types of buffalo rounds get a separate tube? Yeah, those are the same. Yeah, you know, yeah, I'll get you a two for those. All right. And there's um, a random um, maple leaf. This is 2018. And these two monsters are wow. two ounces each. So we got some good selection of silver in here at the coin and stamp shop. 
in Manchester, New Hampshire. Check out the description of the video for all the info. Yep. Don't, before you go, we have lots of 100-ounce bars. We have lots of kilos. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Those are fun. We have lots of 10-ounce bars. <laughs> Those are fun, though. <laughs> They are. All right, so 10-ounce kilos, 100-ounce bars. We've got a bunch. you have one and five-ounce bars, too? Uh, we do have some left, okay. yeah. Okay, good, yeah. good, good, good. So, yeah, definitely check out Tim. Give him a call. Getting closer. It's been, been kind of nice that the phone hasn't rung while we've been chatting here. It's amazing. I don't know what's nice about that. <laughs> I'm sure it's going to ring at any second. That phone means business. <laughs> I know, right? But when I'm talking to you, it's kind of nice not to have it interrupt us. <laughs> yes, yes, it, 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 this week it has been like every two, every two minutes the phone rings. Really? That's and it, it's, it's <clears throat> what I don't like about it is it's the people who call and it's busy. And there's really, with the phone system I have, there's really no way around that. But we're going to change that. Good, good, we're good. good. Would you let it go to voicemail at some point, or? Uh, well, I can't yet. But would you? We well, when we have the the cell phones on it, yeah. It'll, okay. Oh. We have a, a call director type oh, system. I see. It's sitting there waiting for the cell phones. Because I do know you like to answer the phone when it when it goes off. You don't like. I it do to like that. Yeah, because it's it's only fair to the people who are calling. Oh, that's great. Old school is the best school. Definitely check out Tim. And thanks so much for uh, chatting Good with us. You, Good seeing you. Oh, the propaganda. I forgot. That. <laughs> We're supposed to, I'm supposed to tell everybody to subscribe to Yankee's channel. <laughs> and like the video. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Subscribe to this channel and like it whether or not you do. <laughs> thanks, buddy. <laughs>